We have a, uh, a very unique workflow, it's called Tails. Uh, it was developed uh, three to four years ago in our lab. And what we basically do is we modify our proteins so that all the reactive sites are blocked. For this we used to use uh, dimethylation, reductive amination of all the reactive groups. Then we cut the protein into uh, chunks by trypsin digestion. And by this digestion, all the non-blocked peptides that uh, are made by this digestion are reactive again. So we can fish those out with a proprietary uh, polymer that was also developed in our lab. In that way, we actually uh, enrich for all the blocked peptides, so all the normal termini, but also the cleavage sites that occur. And by doing this, we actually reduce the sample complexity quite a lot. And that enables to dig deeper into this protease web, into these cleavage sites. The traditional way of doing uh, this, this blocking step that is necessary for our research is done by dimethylation, which has severe limitations, like uh, it has limited multiplexing capability. And uh, the data analysis is quite, quite painful, I would say, especially for our specific type of uh, data that we get. So when we switched over to TMT 10 uh, it on the one hand enabled us to get a, a wider scope to compare more samples to each other in a single analysis, which is very important because obviously it's, it's a long, complicated procedure. So you introduce a lot of variability there. So by combining samples early on and combining multiple samples in a single analysis, we reduce this variability and get uh, a better power to actually detect these cleavage events that are different in different conditions. Most of the data that we've published so far are either from a Q-star mass spectrometer or from the Orbitrap Velos, which is also a great machine, but it doesn't have the same power to dig deep enough into the proteome as the Fusion does. So by getting this data analyzed on the Fusion, we actually got the biggest data set, the largest data set that we ever, uh, ever acquired. Plus, we found some really interesting things that in my opinion, we would have never found if we didn't have access to the fusion for this project. In our experience, it's very difficult to actually get this quantified properly, and especially in our condition, because we face the problem that we have partial labeling, because our n peptides may already be modified by acetylation or pyroglutamation or any modification that is there. So we only have around 30% of n labeled peptides, and most softwares can't really handle that. So that's why we switched over to an isobaric tag in the MS2 quantitation, and that kind of completely abolishes that whole problem. So in our opinion, the, uh, the isobaric tag or the, the TMT is, is the way to go for this kind of research. So for this particular project, that, that was the first project that we used TMT 10 plex and the Orbiter Fusion. We worked together with people in BC Children's Research Institute. They actually were treating a patient that has a very severe immunodeficiency. So she basically has no adaptive immune system. And uh, since we already know from previous research that was done in our lab, uh, we know that proteolysis, especially MMPs, have an important role in, uh, in innate and adaptive immunity. Taking cells from this patient, who was very willing to collaborate, so we were very grateful for that, and taking cells from patients' uh, relatives, we were able to actually do a fully comprehensive study in a single sample, basically of uh, a triplicate patient sample with uh, a brother control, a mother control. So we had the actual relatives, which are closer biologically to the patient, obviously, than we take any wild type in both native and stimulated conditions. And this enabled us to dig really deep into the, uh, the function of the B cells that we studied and actually look at what uh, pathways were actually affected in the patient.